timestamp August 16th, 2013. The following audio clips were selected from over 160 hours of reel-to-reel tape found in the residence of the late Dr. Warren Vidic following his murder in December 2012. According to labels on the tape's canisters, these recordings were made over a 14-month period between 1980 and 1981 without the consent of their primary subject, Mrs. Eileen Bach, a colleague of Dr. Vidic's and the originator of Abstergo's surrogate initiative. Mrs. Bach is now deceased. It should be stated unequivocally that Dr. Vidic made these recordings illegally and of his own volition using wiretaps and hidden microphones. That Stergo Industries had no knowledge of his actions and disavows any responsibility for them. And we're live. Capacitators at full. Is the signal in? A little more. You feel anything? Don't be timid. Double it. No, we're taking it easy. 20%. 30. Eileen, go easy. We're six past yesterday. And boost the inputs. Too risky. Not if we split the I.O. signals. 25%. He's up. Oh, okay. There. I see something. I... What is it? My God. I hear talking. You're... You're okay? Yeah, I hear a stimme. It's... It's German. My name is Miriam Kurz. I see a light. It's cold. Ich werde nichts sagen. There's a man with me. Mehr werde ich nicht sagen. Keep an eye on our fighters. Mein Name ist Miriam Kurz und ich bin eine Navajo. Das Hitlers Zwang, der macht uns klein. Doch liegen wir in Ketten. Doch einmal werden wir wieder frei. Wir werden die Ketten schon brechen. Eileen? Denn unsere Fäuste, die sind hart, ja. Und die Messer sitzen lose. Für die Freiheit der Jugend kämpfe, Navajos! <laughs> Switch off! Powering down! Kämpf, Navajos! Get her out of there! <laughs> Oxygen! Put the valve! No. <coughs> no, Satish, I'm, I'm fine, really. Quit the heroics, just breathe. Better? Yes. Yes, thank you. Did we get something? It'll take a while to pass. What did you see? It wasn't just seeing. It was feeling, being. I was... I was scared. You were shouting in German? I think I was in Germany. I was in Germany, Satish. <laughs> Good morning. Well rested? Exhausted. Yesterday was an incredible find. Seems so. What did it feel like? It's foggy, but I... I relived the memories of a young German woman. Early 20s, I think. A man was interrogating me, looming over me and asking questions. He was shouting, but I was shouting back. And then this... This poem just came out, like a chant. Fascinating. I'm eager for you to hear the tape. Is it ready? Yes, we transliterated the data onto an audio file. It took all night to process the language. Spool it up. Of course. Have a seat. Judging by the subject matter and the setting, I'd say you landed somewhere in Germany in the 1940s, one or two generations back. During the war, I'd imagine. 1940s Germany? (laughs) That would be Miriam Kurtz, my ex-husband's mother. So she's not related to you in any way? God, I hope not. I'd hate to find out my ex-husband is also my brother. (laughs) Well, if it was Miriam Kurtz, then we hit a home run. You tapped into someone else's bloodline entirely. (laughs) Should we celebrate? We'll listen first. Surrogate initiative, test session 23, July 29th, 1980. Host, Eileen Bach. DNA sample, SB1970. It's a little garbled at first. This is you settling into the memory. Your name, say it. My name is Miriam Kurtz. Louder. My name is Miriam Kurtz, and I am Navajo. Where did you last see the artifact? Who holds it now? I'll say nothing. I've told you all I will. I don't believe that is true. Who has the artifact? Hexler's dictates make us small and are bound in chains. But one day again, we shall walk tall. No binds with us. Restrain. Enough. For hard our feasts, yes, and the knives at our wrists for you to be free. Now yours lay siege. Lock her away. Now yours lay siege. And that's where we pull you out. Whoa. What would it take to get a visual render of all that? Mm, 
months, unfortunately. It took 13 hours just to process the audio. Visual takes much longer. But Vidic is able to record audio and visual in real time. How does he do it? His subjects are exploring their own genetic memories. That requires much less processing power. Uh, hold on, sorry. Eileen here. Hello. You have 10 o'clock in Lillian's office. It's 10.13 now. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Tell her I'll be right there. And tell her we have some good news. No problem. You in trouble? Ugh, the monthly progress report. I'm trying to be honest about our progress, but no matter how much I polish our facts, Warren Vidic swoops in, promising the moon for pennies, and gets ten times the funding for his Animus project. Well, we are using his Animus technology. He's the foundation. We are the skyscraper. Which is why he should be a tech lead, not a project director. <sighs> Good work, Satish. It's incredible footage, really. Clear and vivid. And the subject was synced for a full 62 minutes. Came out speaking French after his last session. Passably fluent. And with full recall of everything he'd gone through. Sorry, sorry I'm late. I was reviewing some data. It's fine. Warren was just telling me about his first subject. Mr... No names. Call him Subject One. Confidentiality. And how about you, Eileen? What's your good news? Well, we did it. We synced with an unembedded memory outside the bloodline. That's a first. Really? Satish was able to process the audio today. A short clip. You can hear it for yourself. Only audio? No real-time memory feeds like Vidic has? Well, that's the difficulty with surrogate genetic memory data. Because I'm viewing memories not embedded in my own DNA, we can't rely on my cognitive faculties to help me process the signal. All we can do is record the raw data and transliterate it later. Hold on. You're running this experiment on yourself? I am. It's going well. I don't like the sound of that. Look, the sample I'm using, the DNA comes from my own son. It's safer this way. Ah, good thinking. 50% of my son's DNA is also mine, which reduces the danger by a huge margin. Meaning, I can now explore the memories of people who aren't directly related to me, on his father's side. But for brief periods of time, I imagine. Right. Just a minute or two, so far. But we're getting there. Come by the lab and listen for yourself. I will, when I have a moment. Unfortunately, work beckons, ladies. That man is colder than a San Francisco summer. Stay focused, Eileen. You both have important work to do. Obviously. But my work requires his animus technology. I feel a little caged in. That's collaboration, Eileen. It's how science works. I shouldn't have to remind you. I know. I'm just... tired. Stop by and see us today. We have a lot to share. If not today, then this week sometime. Thank you. Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 27, October 21st, 1980. Host, Eileen Bach. DNA sample, SB1970. Miriam. Miriam. There is no good reason for you to be here. But your intransigence requires that I detain you until you give me information I can act upon. The location of the artifact, perhaps. Or the whereabouts of your leader. Just a little something to give Minister Goebbels some encouragement that we are on the right track. How about a nice hug? He looks so sad in all his photographs. <laughs> yes, he does, doesn't he? Perhaps you could pay him a visit yourself. He likes beautiful women. Actresses, musicians. Pirates. That's right, pirates. Pirates of the Edelweiss. Isn't that what you kids call yourselves? It's very amusing. And illegal, of course. Breaking Hitler's laws is half the fun. Oh, I imagine so. I imagine you were having a wonderful time just before we captured you on your search of friends. And that's the end of it. Damn it. Why can't we sustain the signal for more than just a few minutes? I need to relax. That's not the issue. This is dangerous work. These memories aren't in your bloodline. That's why it's not holding. There's got to be a solution. Uh, any idea what they mean by the artifact? I've heard it a few times now. Not sure. I don't think Miriam knew either. 
Not much comes into her mind when she asks about it. But she's protecting the other members of her group, the Edelweiss pirates or something? Yeah, Bartol Schink. Have we looked him up? No, we can. We should. Put your intern on it. <laughs> right. High priority. Yeah. <sighs> this isn't getting any easier. Jesus. Hi, Seamus. It's Mom. Hey. How are you? Dad! It's Mom! Hello, huh. Eileen. Hi, Carl. How's Seamus? Great. We were out shopping for school clothes. Yeah. The summer just sped by. They all do. I never seem to notice. No windows in the office. Right. Trapped in the lab. So, did you need to talk? Yes, sorry. I was curious about your mother, actually. Oh. Okay. How much did she talk about the war when you were growing up? Not often. Bits and pieces. Why? I was doing some research last week about World War II, and something came up about the Edelweiss pirates, or the Navajos, and your mother's name popped up. Really? That's an odd coincidence. Does that... does any of that ring a bell? Yeah. Mom ran with that group while the war was on. There were a group of kids who wanted to avoid the Hitler Youth programs, but in later years they escalated their activities to, uh, bigger ideas like vandalism and sabotage. But why Navajos and pirates? Just some of the names they used. Navajos, Edelweiss pirates, you know, kids. There were little pins, little white flowers. I may still have hers. That's interesting. And this is for work, researching my mother? Not exactly, but... Sorry, I can't talk about it. Right. You never could. Hey, don't. I didn't mean to be flippant. No. Don't mind me. All for the greater good. I like to think so. Ah! Ah! Power down! You all right? Damn it! Five months of this bullshit! We're floundering. Take it easy, Eileen. You're just stressed. I am not stressed. I'm frustrated. I'd like to go again this afternoon. No. There is no reason to rush this. We're hardly rushing. We're running into the same wall over and over again. Why can't we push through? Why can't you keep me in the Animus longer than two minutes? Because surrogate genetic memory data is fragile. The EEG is exploding and your brain is doing too much work. The longer you stay in, the more damage it does. It's even possible that... Possible that... It's possible the memories we're digging into could eventually overwrite your own. Like information on a tape drive. There's just not enough space in your head to do both. Here I come to save the day! <laughs> Good afternoon, all. Did you invite him? No, but you did. Remember? That was months ago, Warren. What do you need? I wanted to stop by. Check on your progress. Well, apparently it's still too dangerous to keep me under for more than a few minutes. Hmm. I always suspected that would be your biggest hurdle. The genetic memory sequencing is the easy part, if time-consuming. But the replay, that's something else. Yes? Let's think this through. My subjects are diving into their own genetic memories, so the information is already encoded in their heads. Which means the Animus has less work to do. Less computing, less parsing. Right. So to get your surrogate data working, to let people experience foreign memories, it'll take a hell of a lot more processing power than anyone has. Even Abstergo Industries. Ideally, we'd like to build an external processor that mirrors as many brain functions as possible. Something to handle the calculations. But the cost and upkeep of that would be... Astronomical. Let me see what I can do. I have some sway with Lillian. We won't build Rome in a day, but if we focus on the pretty buildings first, Maybe we'll achieve something. Thank you, Warren. Till next, folks. Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32. January 11th, 1981. Host Eileen Bach. DNA sample SB1970. Miriam? Miriam, is that you? Are you in here? Bartle, how did they find you? Oh, Jesus. 
What will they do to you? Has they hurt you at all? I told them nothing. All they do every day is ask about you and that artifact. But I didn't tell them anything. Nothing. I know you didn't, Miriam. But how are you? You aren't hurt. Not badly, no. I'm fine. Good. We need to get the message out to Oscar. Somehow. We, we need to tell him where... Very interesting footage, Eileen. This is Germany, you said. World War II? Most of the memories I've been able to access come from a period where Miriam was imprisoned by Nazis in Cologne. Miriam. Is she still alive? No, she was my husband's... Mo my ex-husband's mother. She passed away about five years ago. Well, she was spirited. An impressive lady. Definitely. And the man, Bartle. He made reference to an artifact. Any idea what that is? My team is looking into that, but it's not our first priority. We still need... It is now. Really? You must have other recordings of this woman. Are there any other mentions of this artifact I should know about? Half a dozen or so, yes. What's this about? You have questions. I understand that. I don't have answers for you. Not right now, but I do have money. And if you get me those recordings and bring me any other artifact references you find, then I will triple your operating budget for as long as I can. Triple my budget? My God, what is this? 9 a.m. Monday morning, my office. We have a lot to discuss. But Lillian, I don't... Have a good weekend, Mrs. Bach. Fantastic work. Hi, it's Eileen. Hey, how are you? Good. Busy. Cold. The winter's been terrible. Ah, uh, Seamus won't like that. The weather's been mild out here. Well, he's only coming for a month. He'll live. And I'll be so busy, he won't have to worry about his mother bothering him. Ah, uh, still working 12-hour days. I should move a bed into my lab. Look, if you're too busy, Seamus can stay with me. No, no. I want to see him. We'll have fun. You're not too busy to be a mom and a genius. Of course not. His flight lands at... 8.15 p.m. tomorrow night. You'll be there? Of course. 8.15. P.m. Let him know you'll be there. Thanks, Carl. I need to run. I'm sorry. Take care. You too. Ah, Eileen. Didn't see you come in. I'm not interrupting. No, it's fine. The subject is unconscious. He's traipsing around 18th century New Orleans right now. In the memories of a woman. That must feel odd. How long has he been under? 83 minutes. Whoa. It's average. What can I do for you? I just wanted to... to thank you for sending Lillian to see me. She came away very impressed. There. You see, all these bureaucrats need is a little glimpse of our secrets every so often. They like to feel like they're still in charge. Lillian is most definitely in charge. She just tripled my budget. Tripled? Christ, Eileen. You must have discovered who killed Kennedy. <laughs> well, she heard something on one of my tapes that interested her. Something about an artifact. Very vague, but it was enough. An artifact? What sort of artifact? Jesus, get him out of there! Get him out! Oh my god. It'll kill him! He's not decoupled! He's having a fucking seizure! Power down! Now! Heart rate 170! Power down! Eileen, Warren here. I was all ready to apologize for the late call, but you seem to be away. Maybe with your son. Uh, listen, since the unfortunate incident with Subject One, there's been a lot of dire talk around the office about my Animus project, about shutting it down, about it being unsafe. Typical top brass bullshit. And if they shut me down, then your surrogate initiative goes away, too. I'm sure you're already well aware of that. Well, let me be the first to reassure you. This will not happen. I will not let them take this from me. From us. I will not let one death of an undiagnosed epileptic, I should add. I will not let this destroy the decades of incredible research done by our predecessors. And the five years I've spent perfecting the Animus. There's still more work to be done. 
and countless rewards to be reaped. So I wanted you to be the first to know. I have decided to volunteer myself as my second subject. I am convinced that the Animus is perfectly safe, provided I stay within the boundaries of my own ancestral bloodline. Next week I plan to prove this by staying a full four hours in the Animus. I would be grateful if you and your team would monitor my progress. And after this necessary but ridiculous proof of concept, I give you my word that I will work closely with you to solve your outstanding problems. Your surrogate initiative is a bold idea, and I do believe it is the future of the Animus Project. But while we have the Animus itself, I do not want to waste precious opportunities to prove its safety. I'll see you in the office on Monday. Goodbye. I have now resumed the practice of dressing as a man, and have put off my woman's dress. Why did you take it? Who made you take it? I took it of my own free will, with no constraint. I prefer a man's dress to a woman's. You made an oath, Jeanne. You swore to never again dress as a man. I never meant to swear that I would not resume the practice. Why have you done so? Because... It is more lawful and suitable for me to return to the practice of wearing a man's dress, being always among men, than to have a woman's dress. I have resumed it because I promised me to be a How is he? Our three doing well. Are we still in 18th century Hungary? No. His connection is so stable he's jumped between a few ancestors today. We're in 15th century France now. Turns out he's related to one of Joan of Arc's executioners. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, Eileen, yesterday Vidic asked me to help him work out some of the bugs in his audiovisual renderer, uh, and I told him... No, no, no. Come on, Satish, not you. It wouldn't be permanent. A, a few months at most. Months? That will kill every ounce of momentum we have. It won't, I promise. Honestly, I think this could help us. If, if I can get a look at what these people are doing, we could... Come on. He's trying to pull you over to his side. Don't you see that? He's luring you with quick victory and prestige. That's not what this is about, honestly. I need to get back to work. Eileen, I'm sorry. Do what you must. I'll survive. Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32. April 2nd, 1981. Host Eileen Bach. DNA sample SB1970. Miriam. Miriam, are you awake? But? Miriam, they're coming for me. Who oh, is it? The guards? I see them from my window, amassing in the courtyard. My time is up. But don't say this. You don't know that. Forgive me for this, Miriam. But I must tell you something. The artifact. We have it. But only Oscar and I know its location. Don't tell me. They will release you. Your family has connections. You must take the artifact and bring it to the assassins in Paris. Please don't. I don't want to know. It's safer if I don't. Hush now. If I die, knowledge of its location dies with me. You must bring it to the assassins. Assassins? I don't understand. The spy of St. Petrus. No, I don't want to hear. Seven, seven. Seven. Hello? Eileen, hi. It's Carl. Carl, I know it's you. Sorry, you just sound exhausted. Did I wake you? No, no, I'm... I've just been busy. It sounds like it. I'm just a little tired, that's all. No, I mean, your your project sounds fascinating. Your colleague, Dr. Warren Vidic, he called me recently and he told me what you've been up to. He what? Warren? Yeah, he told us about your research, memories, ancestry, all of that. He even asked if we'd be willing to come in and... No! Jesus, no! What the hell is he doing? Eileen, it's okay. We signed some papers, non-disclosure stuff. No! He's trying to fuck me over! Damn it! Eileen, we just talked about my mother, just like you and I did. World War II. That's all. It's the artifact. The what? Carl, 
If he calls you again, you tell him you work through me, okay? That's it. Vidic has been a pain in my ass for years, and I don't need him getting all the glory for my two years of hard work. All right. Uh, so how should I go about this? I mean, the wheels are in motion. I... I don't know. Just go through me if he contacts you again. Please? All right. You'll do that? Of course. Yes. Thank you, Carl. I'm sorry I was short with you. I've just been exhausted. That's all. It's all right, hon. Just, just take care of yourself. Morning, Eileen. We're almost ready. Just a few more adjustments. Hmm. Okay. I had the team do some research on this artifact we've been chasing, and it appears the Third Reich actually found something matching its description sometime in 1940. Uh, Eileen, are you all right? Sorry, yeah. I'm fine. Just a little scattered. Biddick called Meg's husband last night. He wants to put him in the Animus. To find the artifact before us? Exactly. Well, it would be faster using Biddick's Animus. And maybe that would get us back to our original work. Satish, if we let that happen, then all our money dries up. Lillian is paying for us to find the artifact, not improve our methods. Do you understand? Right, of course. I'm sorry. Let's just... Let's just burn those bridges when we cross them. Are we ready? Yes, just a few more adjustments, Senorian. I made a small change to the genetic input modulator. I'm hoping that buys us a few more minutes. Even a few seconds would be nice. I'm ready. All right. Settle in. Surrogate initiative. Test session 37. August 9th, 1981. Host, Eileen Bach. DNA sample SB1970. Open! Good morning, Miss Kurtz. You look well, considering the circumstances. Are you rested? Hmm. Have you eaten? Your friends are dead, Miriam. Bartle Shink and all his navigators, his Edelweiss pirates, executed for five counts of murder. It has a trial. You must be proud. There was no need! They were scum! All of them! You hear me? All of you are scum! 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 <laughs> I see it so clearly now. She didn't break, did they? You have nothing! Quiet, girl! You don't have the yours effect. If you did, you wouldn't be talking to me at all. Now you your slave seat! I said quiet! Now your slave seat! Now your Eileen, open your eyes. Can you hear me? Eileen! Eileen! Power's off! Get the position in here! Step aside, son! Eileen, talk to me. Can you open your eyes? Where? Oh, God. No spots. towards a speech in honor of Dr. Eileen Bach's premature retirement. When I first learned of Dr. Bach's unfortunate accident, I couldn't help but feel a great sense of loss at... No. No, no. Hmm. Dr. Eileen Bach has, and always will be, a friend and colleague. When I first learned of her unfortunate accident, I was shocked, of course. 
To see any friend injured in such a way is deeply upsetting. And to further learn that her injuries were severe enough to force a premature conclusion to her brilliant career. Well, I would not wish that fate on anyone. But, if there is any solace to be found in her accident, it may be this. That she was injured in service of her research. In service of work that she cherished most dearly. And it is thanks to her, it is due to her diligence that some of the mysteries of genetic memory have been further illuminated. And while it is true that work on her project, the surrogate initiative, as she called it, has been temporarily halted, the copious amount of work she has done over the past three years has been incredibly valuable. So while her work has been suspended for the time being, her legacy will most certainly live on. <laughs> Quiet, Joan! Quiet! <laughs>